Hello, everyone. Can you hear me very well? Is it okay? In the last rows, can you see the slides and uh, hear me? Okay, perfect. Thank you. The mic check is complete. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, so we'd like to spend these 45 minutes on cybersecurity topics and how it relates to software development, to threat intelligence, and other interesting uh, areas which are very hot uh, in the IT world. <laughs> And uh, we represent Tieto, which is the one of the largest IT companies in the Nordics, meaning uh, originally from Finland, but also uh, Sweden and Norway and uh, the surrounding region. We have a strong presence in Wrocław and uh, uh, we are growing our team on the cybersecurity side, which, uh, uh, which uh, includes the, the service operations, everything related to the service itself on the security side, uh, the security operations, everything that relates to the analyzing the threats and doing security investigations and incident response on the cyber threats. And we are also <coughs> building our DevOps organization because you cannot succeed without your own technology platform and the ability to uh, work on the data. And cybersecurity today is about the ability to work on large numbers of uh, uh, and volumes of different forms of data. Traditionally, it has been logs, but today it's more. It's also network flows, it's a full packet capture and other forms of high fidelity forensic data. This is what we do, and we are growing our, our team. I am heading this organization here and also in the region. We have also presence in Ostrava, we have presence in Finland and in other countries. And, uh, and uh, this is what we are going to, to spend our time today. So. So together with me is uh, Igor Ivanov, who is the lead incident responder on our uh, threat operations team, and Daniel Yugoslavsky, who is the uh, incident responder on our team as well. Now, uh, this, uh, this looks like a, uh, like a hardware issue, but we recovered. That's, that's good. This is, uh, this is what security is all about, because in the SOC, in the security operations, no news is good news, right? And uh, everything that we, we engage in is generally bad news, right? So this is a typical, you know, uh, this is a typical situation that we have. And uh, what we'd like to cover in this short session, we'd like first, first to tell you a little bit more about the, the, the mentality um, uh, of the incident response and security operations in general. <coughs> Today, in the industry, nobody believes that you can prevent and you can protect, okay? So all the, all the relevant uh, security mechanisms, like implementing a firewall or a web proxy or email security or endpoint detection and uh, response or anti-malware service or product or platform <coughs> is good. And people do it, okay? You, you, need to, you need to have something, at least to protect against the, the basic stuff and the intermediate stuff. And the advanced stuff, what you do actually is Nobody believes you can catch it in the moment it arrives in your environment. So we are focused more and more into the incident response, into retrospection and ability to, uh, to ingest the data, which is relevant, and uh, utilize threat intelligence, correlate it against uh, uh, the data that, that we have, and make, make, some, uh, make some decisions, okay? And the decision that we produce in the SOC and the value in general in the security operations is whether I have been breached or not. All right, so this is the, this is the final product of the SOC. And all the surrounding activities like the platform development, like the process development, operations development, educating our staff to be on par with the current threat landscape leads to one uh, result. And the result is to answer this fundamental question, whether I have been breached or not. And we are a part of security services, which means that we, uh, we protect our own company, which is a 14,000 people company, and we also protect many, many customers in the uh, Nordic region, all right? So, uh, uh, so uh, yes, and in general, we don't like to work with, uh, with a total blackness. We'd like to see something, so we are going to show you exactly what, uh, uh, what we can see. All right, so <coughs> our agenda for today is intelligence-driven defense. It's, it's a Mac, so it's still better than a blue screen, okay? Thanks. Uh, so the intelligence-driven defense. Intelligence is the knowledge 
In military, you have military intelligence, right? M it's the knowledge about the threats. I we have some knowledge, we have historical knowledge. In general, the humanity has cultivated knowledge about all the threats that existed in the universe since the moment the internet was born, right? We know it, so we use it, right? So if somebody uh, executes the same type of attack, we can find it. The problem is that you can change one byte in every malware sample and it produces a totally different SHA uh, <coughs> digest and you will be never able to find one-on-one -on -one detection via a traditional um, <coughs> detection engines. So then we are going to uh, talk a little bit about cyber uh, attack uh, life cycle because as I mentioned, we are moving more and more into the post-exploitation phase. Nobody believes you can catch all the attacks in the moment they arrive and you are you are not able to protect your, your IT environment and your network, okay? <laughs> now, <coughs> we'll discuss a little bit what we are doing and what we are building in-house based on Elastic and other uh, tools available uh, on the market in the open source domain and also we produce our own, own code. And we'll do a nice case study about how the hacking team was hacked, really, how this attack was execu executed. We are going to do the demo and we are going to take a Q&A. And by the way, we are in booth number eight, okay? So this is a very packed session, very intense. And, uh, you know, half of the time we've spent on stabilizing our hardware here. <coughs> so we'll see how it goes. But in general, please visit us at, at booth eight. Okay, booth eight is the Tieto booth and please ask for security guys, please talk to us. We have a uh, very interesting uh, mm, um, positions on, on our team and we are looking both for people who are kind of uh, starting their career and also for people who are veterans. Like if you are 40 or 50 plus and you, are, you, you have a DNA of building a company, then I it is the right place to be. All right, because we are, uh, we are uh, in our company, we are, a s we are a growth organization, we are a startup. Okay, so we have to figure out stuff because nobody will tell you how to do it, right? So having said that, uh, I will pass on to, to Igor and, and we'll, we'll, we'll move now to the, to the, to the, uh, to the real stuff. Okay. Thanks, Gail. Uh, so uh, uh, we are sorry for these hardware issues. I hope it wo won't affect our talk. Uh, so, uh, why why did we chose this topic as well? Why why are we calling this uh, intelligence driven defense? But first of all, uh, kind of on the background of threat intelligence, because uh, in recent times it uh, became kind of a little bit of a buzzword, because uh, kind of in the market uh, it's considered, you know, uh, every security vendor is selling something called, you know, threat intelligence this uh, of threat intelligence that. Uh, it's considered to um, kind of uh, the add-on that mm, kind of company or organization can buy and somehow be a threat intelligence compliant. But uh, what is really uh, kind of threat intelligence? Is it something that, uh, you know, security vendor sells you as a, uh, let's say, uh, as a th threat of malicious IPs or threat uh, feed of uh, malicious hashes? Uh, we uh, we believe that this is not the case because uh, the uh, threat intelligence and intelligence uh, in itself is not a really uh, it's not really a <coughs> new topic because uh, it comes from the you know uh, as long as uh, uh, as long as uh, there was a concept of uh, of an enemy of an uh, attacker uh, and then it, it comes from a mi military background then there was a uh, people who studied the uh, studied the uh, attacker. Uh, studied the, their behavior, their uh, patterns of behavior, uh, motivations, goals, and uh, by learning this, uh, improved the overall defenses. And this applies also to the, uh, you know, uh, cyber security field. Uh, uh, well, uh, we we believe that uh, threat intelligence is not a you know nice add-on to have, but it's an integr in integral uh, process. Uh, in the you know in the overall cyber security domain, then you should apply, and we hope to you know prove uh, prove it to you. Uh, but uh, you know how we are uh, actually uh, defining the threat intelligence overall. Uh, I like this quote from the former uh, director of threat intelligence at Microsoft that 
really uh, what is threat intelligence is a knowledge and insights on uh, adversaries, their behaviors, and uh, by studying them, we are making uh, better security decisions and improving overall uh, overall uh, cybersecurity posture uh, in our organizations. Um, so, uh, in, in recent times, there were multiple attempts to somehow structure and um, uh, uh, bring some methodology to uh, overall this uh, th cyber threat intelligence field. And there were, uh, mm, there are two kind of uh, very important concepts to, to understand and uh, Daniel will tell about them in a minute. Yeah, hello everybody, can you hear me? Um, so yeah, there is a few frameworks which are actually helping us uh, to describing cyber attacks and cyber threats. First of all is cyber attack life cycle or also known as a kill chain or intrusion kill chain. This was originally uh, articulated by Lockheed Martin in 2011 and it's the way how we can describe stages of every cyber attack. Uh, it could be divided into two, two parts. First part is pre-compromise when a hacker actually uh, doesn't have access to our systems yet. <gasps> It consists of a few stages. Uh, recon is actually uh, gathering information about our systems when Hager is trying to find some weaknesses, vulnerabilities, and stuff like that. Um, after that, he, when he already found something, he just creating some kind of exploits or malicious email and then delivering it to the victim and then executing it at stage of at exploit stage. So, uh, to everything we can do on this parts of kill chain or on this part of attack life cycle is do not let uh, compromise happen and we, we can stop it on delivery or on exploit stages. It could be achieved using uh, some prevention measures for example firewalls or new generation firewalls, IPSs, IDSs, sandboxes or even um, antiviruses on the endpoints. And to succeed in defending against these stages of attack, we need to be vulnerability focused. It's because uh, the actually only way to hack into systems is using vulnerability or some kind of weaknesses. For example, um, okay, uh, some vulnerability in, in a border gateway or in Windows infrastructures or in browser and stuff like that. Or kind of weaknesses or misconfigurations. And everything I just mentioned could be called classical defensive approach and it has one main problem. People think that if they implemented all possible perimeter based solutions and then conduct uh, vulnerability scans in a periodic manner, install uh, antiviruses, they are safe. It creates a false sense of safety because there are uh, zero day vulnerabilities or unknown vulnerabilities. There are Black market of exploits for, again, there are the vulnerabilities. There are a lot of human factors, mistakes, or accidents. We have a real life example when uh, in some, our customer infrastructure, they implemented patch to all domain, but no, not all machines has been rebooted. So patch just uh, uh, does not implement it to few machines. And after months, uh, famous, Network worm not Peter has access to a few vulnerable machines and then dumped credentials and then propagate itself to all machines as well as patches. So then we was called and react to this to this incident. And there are dozens and hundreds of such examples in our expertise. So next part of kill chain is post compromise. Is the uh, where more they're all harmful things happens. It's when hacker already inside our network. It also consists of few stages like control, execute and, and maintain. It's like uh, when attacker um, creating control channel and then execute their plan, it's general execution of all plans and then maintain access or long term access to the system. Uh, this stage also could be executed not linear or even bypass. For example, in, ca in case of malware or ransomware, they just can start it to execute all plans without asking uh, command and control server to 
for instructions. Here, to be to succeed in defend this against these stages, we can we only can rely on detection and response abilities because when hackers are already inside our network, the only way to detect it, to detect them, is to know them, to know their techniques, to know their tactics, to know tools which are which they are using. So uh, we just uh, trying to realize which TTP or techniques, tactics, and procedures exist in the entire world, then we shall, which are relevant for our infrastructure, and this way we're creating our own uh, relevant threat model. And only this way we can found uh, adversaries inside our network on these stages. So it means that we are threat focusing instead of vulnerability focusing because it's, I believe it's, it's obvious. We just need to, to know our uh, threats, possible threats and attackers on these stages. So actually, that is what uh, threat intelligence even defense is about. Uh, but don't get me wrong, it's not only about the last part of kill chain or, or last part of uh, attack life cycle. It's about both parts and every stage of attack. But with crystal clear understanding what's exactly happening, how hackers operate, what exactly can they can do in our infrastructure, this, I this is very important part. And this is not a replacement for classical approach. This is uh, like improvement of it. So, after uh, creation or adapting uh, cyber kill chain, Mitre Corporation creates more detailed uh, like a tactics or steps which uh, attackers executing during these parts of attack life cycle. We will concentrate now on post-compromise stage because of this is most problematic area for now. And it consists of 10 tactics, which are includes 169 techniques for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS operating systems. Just for your understanding, the variety of techniques. Uh, has anybody heard about WannaCry in this, in this room? WannaCry, guys, is like a... Uh, Worm, which attacked Windows infrastructure in the entire world this spring. For example, it's used this set of techniques. Uh, just for f to, to highlight it. We can uh, describe these uh, abilities of such uh, adversaries in using this framework. That's the main idea. Next example is maybe most famous right now, mm, hacking group, which probably associated, associated with Russian military and probably associated with hacking of DNC of USA. It is also a lot of techniques and they have a lot of software which actually <coughs> execute most of them. Another example is probably associated with Chinese uh, hacking group. And I just wanted to highlight that there is a, a lot of techniques which are the same for different threat actors. For example, uh, indicator removal on host. Uh, in case of attack matrix, every technique has a um, kind of wiki style page with description of, uh, with general description what is that, with description of vulnerable or affected hosts, with examples of usage, mitigation, detection, and references to original data sources. But as you can see, everything is in a very, very uh, high level or, uh, I don't know, it's very short description. We cannot actually use it in our, during our work. We cannot just implement this kind of advices and uh, be secured. We cannot even create a proper correlation rule to detect such techniques. So that's why actually we created we in Seattle created our own knowledge base in extended format. We used uh, attack matrix as a basic threat model. It means that we added some our own 
analytics to the matrix, our own techniques. And uh, we create, in our case, every use case is a description of a thread uh, from different points of view. For example, regular conditions, data needed, login policy, correlation rules, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it means it's, it's allow us to collect proper data from hosts, to configure proper login policies, which will allow us to uh, detect specific uh, threats and then even to respond to them and uh, harden our system. And everything is about some specific threat. In other words, we will cover all aspects of defending against some specific threat. So um, that's how it looks like in theory. And Igor will uh, show you more or tell you more about how actually it works in our infrastructure or yeah. in our customers. Thanks. So uh, yeah, it's, it was a nice theory background, but how do we actually um, uh, apply this intelligence-driven uh, approach uh, in uh, real life? Well, first of all, to be uh, able to effectively tra track this um, post-compromise uh, attacker's activities, you need to have a lot of visibility in your, uh, in your organization, in your network. Uh, you need to collect a uh, you know, lot of dat data as from an uh, endpo endpoint perspective and uh, from a uh, network pers perspective. But uh, of course, this is, not, uh, this is not everything. This is like a start uh, you know, to begin with because uh, as your like maturity uh, and as your security capabilities will grow, you will want to onboard more, more and more data. You know, you will have all kinds of ideas how to uh, analyze uh, different uh, uh, d different sources specific for your organization. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, how do we uh, how do we actually implement it in a technology stack? Uh, this is uh, again, this is like a starter pack to begin with, but uh, we think this is nice, nicely integrated uh, kind of stack and framework uh, that you can uh, actually use uh, right now uh, with, uh, you know, with uh, certain uh, customizations or, uh, you know, uh, even out of the box. So uh, let, let me show you the diagram. So uh, first of all, uh, you, you need to have uh, several, mm, several capabilities in your organization. So first of all, uh, security monitoring capability. Uh, you need to be able to uh, ingest all of this data you need to monitor to, to be able to track uh, post-compromise ac uh, activities. This is uh, represented by uh, Elastic Stack. Well, probably some of you are already familiar with this. And uh, second, you, you need to have uh, this, um, uh, let's say, incident case management and uh, automation capability. And uh, this is uh, mm, this is what uh, here is represented by the Hive and the Cortex for uh, you know analyzing and uh, automation a lot of uh, routine stuff. And uh, third, uh, you need to have a threat intelligence platform. And this is not to be confused with like overall threat intelligence. This is just a platform, you know, to be uh, to be able to uh, store uh, and analyze uh, different uh, you know threats, campaigns, and indicators. So uh, first of all, why why uh, why, why Elastic? Uh, well, uh, over the years, uh, uh, Elastic has recommended itself as, you know, um, sort of to go to go open source platform for doing all kinds of uh, monitoring from you know time series perspective, from the logs perspective, and especially from the security monitoring perspective, uh, uh, because uh, you know there is a big. Uh, First of all, there is a big uh, community around it, so you get all the various uh, ready-made configurations and uh, enrichments, and uh, you know you can uh, you can use it for security monitoring almost out of the box with an amount of uh, ready-made stuff. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can use it to uh, do the uh, correlations of, of your uh, of your data, to do the enrichments and uh, actually contextualize your uh, data to present, you know, to analyze not the raw log, but uh, to add some context, reputation data, and uh, your own intelligence. And, uh, well, uh, this is like open source with an asterisk because you also have the benefits of using commercial add-on like XPAC, uh, where you can have the 
machine learning capabilities or graph, graph exploration capabilities as well as uh, uh, more advanced alerting features and reporting. Uh, the Hive is uh, also the open source uh, platform developed by the CERT BDF uh, and it's a collaborative uh, security investigation platform. So you can uh, actually track all your alerts, cases, uh, you know, uh, to, to be able to uh, produce different tasks for different security team members. And uh, also automate a lot, um, lot of routine stuff like uh, response tasks or enrichment tasks or, um, you know, uh, different queries to um, uh, different services. And uh, it's also very extensible in a sense that uh, you can actually uh, write a lot of analyzers yourself. And we actually built two analyzers and uh, uh, published it, it back to the, these open source projects. You can find this on the links. And the uh, third one is uh, MISP. It's also open source developed by uh, Luxembourg CERT. Uh, and it's actually where you, uh, um, where you collect and ingest all your different pieces of threat intelligence. It can be uh, open source, uh, you know, intelligence feeds. It can be uh, commercial um, vendors, or it can be your own analysis uh, from your own incidents, from your own research. And uh, it, it also uh, has nice integration with uh, uh, with uh, with the Hive from the pre previous slide. And uh, you know, you can uh, automate a lot of stuff, you know, to produce. Um, d different different block lists, different alert lists for, for your uh, security devices and platforms like CM, IPS or firewall. Uh, this is of course not uh, this is of course not everything because every kind of every SOC team, every uh, incident response team uh, actually mm, uh, have more you know customized tools, and we are uh, <coughs> building uh, also this. So. Um, for this, uh, you know, for the second part of the talk, we for this talk we uh, we chose this uh, case study. You know how to uh, analyze specific case, and this is uh, what is code name Hackback uh, from 2015. Because uh, you know back in then, uh, one Italian company named Hacking Team was uh, totally breached, like uh, resulted in. A uh, full leak of uh, corporate data, emails, source codes, and uh, everything. Uh, well, what's what's so interesting about it? Uh, the interesting thing about it is that uh, actually uh, the hacker, uh, the uh, hacktivist, or group of hacktivists, we don't know for sure, published uh, you know a full uh, a full guide of how he actually um, you know went through through the all all um, kill chain stages uh, to the you know to the full fully breach, and it's actually a very interesting read. Uh, I highly recommend anyone you know who is interested to read it. About 1,000 lines of code, and uh, you know different stuff. Uh, and it's uh, why it's so interesting because it's first time you know first uh, hand uh, documented. Uh, like re real life APT attack, not lab attack, not everything, but real life APT attack, and it's very uh, you know rich source for us uh, security defenders, because we uh, by studying it we can actually learn uh, you know uh, different tools and uh, you know mindset of the attacker, different te techniques he, he used, and uh, yeah we, we see the like uh, quote from the document that with a really dedicated attacker and you know a lot of free time. 100 hours, you know, even one dedicated attacker can fully breach the company. Uh, yeah, and uh, of, uh, of course, the company has not uh, detected it. So, um, back to the previous topic uh, presented <coughs> by uh, Daniel. Uh, we, we, uh, we mapped all the, you know, techniques used by the, um, by this hacktivist. And there are not so, mm, th there are not so many, there are all uh, kind of well-known techniques uh, mm, kind of techniques we see uh, like every day in our, our environment and detecting it. Uh, but um <coughs> it was really interesting if we are looking uh, sort of from the different perspective uh, from the uh, from the kill chain an analysis, we uh, do see that uh, uh, most of the stuff is on the right side, so on the post-compromise side. 
So it uh, actually takes only one, uh, one exploit, one weakness to get inside the organization. And uh, after this, everything is uh, happening on the later side of kill chain. Uh, that's why it's very important you know, to, uh, to be able to detect and respond to it. And um, uh, yeah, for this talk, we uh, prepared a little, uh, a little demo uh, you know, done in the lab, so to simulate this attack and uh, present different uh, detection techniques. Yeah, and to avoid demonstration effect when actually everything is crushed, we just created screencast. Yeah. So, first technique is just Google search. It's uh, one of the way how to uh, hack and see my address could be found. Uh, it's easy, yeah. Next is Nmap scanning of this uh, IP addresses range and founding first probably interesting IP address. Uh, then after more research, uh, Phineas Fisher realized that this is a immediate device and then exploit, uh, created exploit and then exploited this, this vulnerability for kind of dealing router. Yeah, just everything is, I believe it's clear. Yeah, choose an exploit, an exploitation, and then we just have a remote command shell from the root account. Next one is inside network scanning internal discovery when we're trying to find something interesting. Then we just found internal uh, list of devices, and then we dump credentials, and then using these credentials to check if there are valid, and they're valid and we have access to uh, admin share. It means that we are local admin. After that, we again create SOX proxy and then move laterally to uh, another host using PS exec and PowerShell execution again through proxy chains. It means like through SOX connections. <laughs> yeah, this is like options. Nothing special, again, MSF, Metasploit, and stuff. Again, session opened. Yep. After that, we need to migrate to 64 bytes bits process to have opportunity to dump credentials. This could be achieved using interpreter modules, migrate, so we found some process, we speed, and then migrate to it. Yep. Now we see that this is a different process. So now we are able to, ah, sorry, this is a <coughs> another another technique, uh, privilege escalation to uh, NT authority, which will provide us opportunity to dump credentials after that. Yep. Using KV module of interpreter, we dumping credentials. Everything is obvious from. Yep. Now we can have a domain admin password. And again, this is exfiltration using SMB client from some specific folder. Yeah, we downloaded it. This is a far tar archive. Another one is persistence way. Uh, creating golden ticket using, again, Kiwi module. It's like long term. We're just using uh, legit credentials trying to uh, grant uh, access to the systems. Yep, we have ticket. Next one is some kind of uh, discovery using PowerShell PowerSploit, I believe. Just we are uh, PS exec and the PowerShell base 64 encoded string. Some fancy way, but it's okay. Yep, we found some interesting folders. And spying on uh, users using again PowerSploit modules gets strokes and gets uh, screenshots. Again, using psexec.py and service execution with PowerShell 
uh, base64 encoded command. Yeah, and just to demonstrate that we are entering some credentials, and then we will see it at the log file on the uh, target system. Here we are. And last step is exfiltration using uh, PowerShell module do exfiltrate using DNS 60 query. It's very stupid. It's used uh, NS lookup uh, to the this 60, 60 type of queries to a huge subdomain, whatever one, whatever subdomain, we just use uh, some spe specific DNS server, which is our DNS server, and we dump all queries using C-Shark. This way we will decode it and then uh, get the clear data, exfiltrated data. Um, yeah, and that's, I believe, that's pretty much all. Um, after that, I don't know how much time we have. Actually, we created a description of every step of attack. Like, every step is uh, described with attack description and then with some kind of detection. But depends on uh, time we have, we will we will show not all of them, but <coughs> yeah, if it's okay, what do you think? If it's okay. So yeah, discovery. It is a, uh, and again, this is about post compromise stage because op, because uh, at the pre compromise stage there is no sense to try to dis to detect something because of internet noise because you every time you are under some kind of scanning by bot bots and stuff like that. So this is about post exploitation stage or post compromise stage. Internal scan. Uh, this is a description from this paste bin. DIY guide, and here are how we can detect it using uh, uh, technology stack which we are described. Next one, lateral movement. Again, description of attack and then detection. This is a, a Kibana query which we are using in our production. And this is a result of Kibana query which like this uh, found it uh, uh, with founded techniques used. Uh, next one is Metasploit PSExec dash PowerShell module. Again, uh, some kind of Kibana query to query uh, Windows specific events with specific image pass and, and here uh, result of query. And just for uh, just for understanding, understanding, everything is mentioned here. It's just kind of uh, data for alerting. From these queries, you're creating alerting to your email, uh, to your case management system. In our case, we're using the hive, the hive, and this query will produce alerts in our systems. Yeah, migrate to 64 bits process. Also detected to use it using uh, Sysmon. Get system we detecting using uh, Windows logs, system log, and here we have a result of that query, and everything will be available in the materials of the this conference. After that, credentials access or credentials dumping. This is a Sysmon query mm, for Sysmon logs, event ID 10. And here are results. Uh, exfiltration using SMB client. OK, everything is pretty much obvious, I believe. Uh, Windows log, uh, two events IDs. And here, you just uh, exclude the no known IP addresses of your workstations and uh, service. Because if embedded device or router trying to connect to your network share, this could be suspicious, I believe, or some unauthorized device. Uh, next one is PowerShell modules. Uh, we're detecting in it's using just flat, flat search of uh, native Windows API keystrokes, which because you, you can execute, you can uh, create or execute API calls using PowerShell, and we're just trying to 
find some specific keystrokes in PowerShell logs. This is a native Windows logs. Another one is uh, some specific or well-known keystrokes of, again, in PowerShell scripts, which we also try to find in PowerShell logs. And absolutely the same stuff. Everything is the same here, because also PowerShell get, get keystrokes, get some um, screenshots, and it is this PowerSpoint stuff. And again, the same. And uh, Duke's filtration is, as I said, it's very, it's very stupid script. He, he just using an NS lookup in the circle, and in the loop, and he just uh, creating a lot of DNS queries with TXT type of query, and we can detect it using uh, the detection of uh, process creator process creation, and these are some specific common lines arguments. And that's pretty much all from our side. Awesome, we have time to talk. Yeah, okay, yeah, we have uh, two minutes or maybe some more. So we'll finish on the, you know, on almost last slide, the illustration. Okay, uh, um, sorry, sorry about this. What's, what's happening? Okay, uh, on the uh, illustration of different type of, you know, threat, uh, threat intelligence uh, indicators or signatures or uh, behaviors and how it's um, you know how it's easier for uh, attacker to change it and how it's uh, you know easier or hard uh, it depends for a defender to actually detect and respond to it and uh, well ultimately as uh, Gavel mentioned uh, you know hash values and IP addresses domain names can be easily changed uh, what cannot be really changed is uh, you know or hardly can change is uh, this uh, on on the top, which is uh, TTPs, uh, ta tactics, techniques, and procedures. Yeah, and mostly uh, the the detections which we uh, showed you, mostly about tools, because it is really hard to detect tactics or, or techniques, which is like in unified mode, in unified uh, way. But tools is a bit easier, and most of the queries you can find in our presentations is about detecting tools. But our objective is TTP. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what's what 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 can you do after this talk? Uh, we, we we have put some you know links for, for you know ideas. If you want to try out some uh, you know detections and attacks, uh, you know different open source stuff. Uh, it all will will be published. I hope on um, by by the conference organizers. Uh, for example, yeah. Or you could just. Uh, if you wanted to learn more about attacks or uh, create new detections, uh, learning it, you can just take a look on Metasploit framework, which is the main tool or main penetration testing framework. This is also open source and has like uh, more than almost 2,000 of exploits and like almost 1,000 of other modules, which also could be used by and of course used by adversaries. Yeah. Or if you want to actually, uh, you have detections and you want to, you know, test or simulate the adversaries. So there are, you know, a couple of nice projects that you can do this and, you know, actually simulate attacker inside your network on inside your lab. Or if you are reading, uh, if you are into, you know, reading books and do the trainings, also here are the nice examples. And to finish, you know, let me call back Gavel. <laughs> Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, I hope this was valuable for you. And uh, if you understood everything from this presentation, then of course uh, your place is on our team. If you understood quite a bit, then uh, then please talk to us. If you are starting your career or like to change from a general IT into cybersecurity, please talk to us. And we have Jakub Kadubowski. Jakub, if, you, if you could stand. And uh, Jakub is uh, our recruiter. We are partnering on... on uh, the uh, famous talent acquisition uh, activities. Uh, we are based here in Wrocław uh, in a very nice new office. I think it's one of the best offices in, in, in the city, in green today, Szczytnicka Street. And uh, cybersecurity is one. And the second part is if you'd like to uh, join us to build the underlying technology, the technology stack, our abilities to detect what we've shown you, and take our operations by doing that to the next level, we are also building our DevOps team on the, on the security side. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Please join us at the booth number eight. We are Tieto, and together with me, uh, Igor Ivanov and Daniel Yugoslavsky. Thank you so very much.